Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Difference World YouTube channel. I hope you all out there are having a wonderful day like your girl. And if not, you better be manifesting, planning, and preparing for a better one because it's surely coming to you all for sure. If this is your first, second, or third time to my YouTube channel, welcome. Happy to have you guys. Be sure before you leave, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so once I drop this content, you guys get that notification and you come into Difference World and you come and learn what's going on with your girl. Yeah? Uh, for those that need a little bit back, more background about you, me, I'm an author, motivational speaker, and CEO of my own business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire and entertain all at once so again whether it be your first second or third time back definitely hit the subscribe button before you leave uh, as well as happy wednesday to you guys just hump day uh, so you know on wednesdays we drop our podcast content so this one is going to be uh, one that i did a while back when i first started doing these podcast interview with a lovely name lady by the name of miss t uh, of chats and vibes podcast i had a very good time talking with her she's from dallas i'm from houston so we again have the A-Town, D-Town rivalry. And so it was a good thing, you know, good time I had with her coming on and the show and showing us some love. And I do appreciate, the, you know, the opportunity. It was one of my first interviews I did. Um, looking back on it, man, seeing how far I've come. It was just uh, such a, 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 a wild experience. So without further ado, uh, let's get into it. Check it out. And once we get done, I'll come back on and let you guys know what's going on a little bit more in different world. Yeah, here it is. Hey, hey, and welcome back to another episode of Chats and Vibes with Miss T, uncut and unscripted, coming out of my virtual mocha lounge, y'all, right here in the city of Dallas, Texas. Joining me this evening in the studio is different. She is a up-and-coming author out of H-Town, which is like a couple little steps up the road. So uh, say hello out of, to the people out there, different. What's up, Miss T? Thank you, guys. What's up, everybody out there? <laughs> now, how did you, you how did your mom come up with that name? Is it any background to your naming? Yeah, an identity crisis. <laughs> For who? Your mom or your dad? <laughs> For me. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So when you tell people your name, do they kind of look at you different <laughs> you know, they go, no they go no that's different yeah and they had a little laughing with me yeah, no, like, no, no pun intended girl. yeah <laughs> yeah well i want to thank mm -hmm. you also for uh joining me uh this evening for somewhat of a mm -hmm. interesting topic of discussion just to put it lightly so for those listening you might want to unstrap unloosen your bra straps out there unloosen the, the strings mm -hmm. on them nikes fellas um, grown folks only yeah, uh -huh. yeah um but i um you reached out to me on one of the um facebook groups that i'm in about this book yes, ma'am that you recently written and for the listeners can you tell them the name of your book <clears throat> yes um, my book is called what if a controversial paradigm shift and from the title alone, um, depending on people, different backgrounds or their current uh, mindset state, that can go in different directions. So what do you mean by that topic that you named for this particular book? Yes, so the book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, is written to inform and encourage constant thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. Um, this is done through graphic but provocative illustrations, and it details on controversial deaths and events that have occurred within the African-American community. Only difference is it's just in the form of a race paradigm shift, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, the way that I have set it up is categorized in four main paradigms, it's historical, excuse me, political, precedent, and hypothetical. And within those main paradigms there are sub paradigms and where i'm asking questions pertaining to that particular paradigm shift so if it's a historical paradigm one of the questions that i ask um for instance the first question is what if in 1619 africans started dealing in slave trading wherein as they kidnapped millions of english men women and children 
and kidnapped and brought them on slave ships to America. And so <clears throat> basically just, you know, taking, you know, historical facts, political facts, and precedent facts that have happened in the African-American community and just flip the script on them. And um, I'm going to wait till you ask the reason why I wrote this book, but let me just also <laughs> state that this book is comes with a disclaimer. It is intended for a mature audience only. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, this book was written to encourage thought-provoking conversations about systemic racism in America, but it's also written to stimulate or, if you will, encourage, you know, systemic change, if you will, because I'm, I'm, I'm quite honestly, I'm tired of talking about systemic racism. Let's talk about systemic change. And so this book, although it is set up to ruffle your feathers or ring some bells, mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of it, especially if you can make it to the hypothetical paradigm shifts, the grand scheme of it is to, you know, encourage and show and, and motivate others to have compassion for one another. For one for you know mankind because you know at the end of the day we're all human and we're all struggling you know with the personal battle within ourselves and so why not show compassion you know yeah when in a world that you know is so filled with hate you know it, it's just time and for those out there who are saying you know racism is not dead it's not alive or i don't see color or you know only reason why racism is alive is because you guys are keeping it alive well, you know, if you can't see it this way, then how about this? Yeah. And, and so, um, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. I've heard uh, people make those comments saying that, you know, why do y'all keep talking about racism or why y'all keep mm -hmm. talking about slavery or why you keep talking? Because y'all low key underground undercut still do that crap to a degree, whether you want mm -hmm. to admit it or not in your own special mm -hmm. way. I mean, they do. I mean, just like with the, the killings and stuff in our community, how it doesn't seem to bother them as much mm -hmm. as it bothers us. And I was having this conversation with someone that I said they don't seem, you know, how, um, how many of those policemen that actually were held accountable for the shootings that a very small amount exactly. i did my research less than 10 percent within a year between 2017 to 2020 less mm -hmm. than 10 percent of the of the police officers who were charged in in in, in uh, deaths of unarmed mm -hmm. victims be it you know made it to the mainstream or whether it was unheard it was less than 10 percent they yeah. actually made it to you know the court docket the court doc exactly less than 10 percent yeah so that was one of my questions that <laughs> Y'all can't tell us that y'all don't see that there's something wrong with that. I mean, no matter how you try to justify or whatever, you can't tell me that you don't see the wrong in that. I said, but what if those were black officers shooting these little white boys with these khaki shorts on and these polo shirts? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then it would have been a problem. Definitely. <laughs> And, and where it comes, where I, I take that toll in talking about, you know, the, the death of unarmed black people in America that comes in precedent paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. I talk about, you know, the death of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Mike Brown, Tamir Rice, Trayvon Martin, you know, Jordan Davis, and, you know, so many more. And and, and so what you just said, with that, that ties into, you know, precedent paradigm shift of what's going on right now as we speak within our African-American community. Yeah, that, um, I mean, you have people, like, even now, I can tell, like, with the election, just to give an example, I've worked with those of the lighter persuasion. I've worked for with them, you know, for years. That's just, I mean, come on, there's no way of getting around that. And, you know, everything is cool, and you think you have this, you know, cordial relationship with these people, <laughs> and... <laughs> When that election hit and all that, you know, drama, when I tell you every last one of them mm -hmm. sap suckers this unfriended my ass on Facebook. Oh, you weren't the only one, oh. girl. Let me tell you, no, I was the one who unfriended. <laughs> and, and, and going back in a little bit, my background, I had uh, I went to Sam Houston State University and I was a part of a fraternity. I'm not going to say the name, but... Well, it don't even matter. It's already Thank out you. there. But in that fraternity, <laughs> I had so many friends up until the time that it came 
down for when 2016 the election hit. Then that just showed me, you know, who my real friends or my associates wow. were. Everything it just set the level, and and mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's one thing about you know the truth being revealed. It will reveal who your true friends are yep. and who's for you and who's against you. And 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 honestly, just just taking a look at the other side of it, knowing what they know now. Yeah, you can blame them, but then at the same time, of course, I can see how they don't see that it as racism is still alive. Because how, why you say that? Why you say you this can see what, how they don't see? I just said, I'm, let me finish. Hold on. Because this is what they've been taught. And so if they come up in that environment that is normal, then of course they're going to believe, well, hey, this isn't racism. It's normal to me. This is what I've been taught. And so I can see as, 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 it's me, it being a white person. I see how they, they can't see that racism is still alive. And so this is why I have, you know, constructed this book to be, you know, in grimy and gritty form. Like, mm-hmm. um, it's set up mostly with illustrations. It's a, a small little coffee table like book. It's less than, you know, the reading pages itself is less than 80 pages. So it'll keep your attention span long enough. And, you know, all I'm asking, you know, is just simple, you know, questions, you know, what if, if, you know, so for instance, with the precedent paradigm shift, I have a question that asks, is, you know, the question, you know, what if it, all, you know, frustration and strife and struggles or injustice that, you know, white community received, um, what if they started a movement called White Lives Matter? And what if this movement was dismissed by black, black people? It so I ask, you know, questions about that and i show the illustrations you know having white people marching you know holding signs saying you know white lives matter that you see the blacks on the upper side you know shouting you know slurs and words to them and so again this book is it's, it's real gritty like it's stri- strictly set up that way mm-hmm. to purposely ring some bells to stimulate the conversation a lot of people like to sweep it under the rug but once you've saw, shown something that you know you know tips you off you know of course you're going to share your opinion and then you know somebody's going to rebuttal that opinion Mm -hmm. and then somebody else is going to rebuttal and then somebody else and before you know it you're having the conversation whether you like it or not and i'm well aware that this may not bring the change that i'm hoping for you know during this generation Mm -hmm. but what if you know this is a generation that that plants the seed for the next and so um just going back to where it all come from, you know, where I started with this, mm-hmm. I, I guess I should have took it back a little bit, you know, how this book started or where it, it formed. Um, talking just a little bit before the recording, you know, obviously, like I said, being stuck in the house with the pandemic mm-hmm. and also uh, struggling with my mental health and depression, um, something that that's plagued me for years. Coming up, I had a really tough upbringing, you know, at the age of 11, you know, I ended up on the streets, you know, with my family. We were homeless for about three years. And basically, you know, at the age of 14, I was secretly placed in foster care by a relative and they didn't know, none of my family knew where I was placed, like where I was. They thought I was with that person. What do you mean secretly Um, placed? Yeah, they they dropped me off at CPS one time, one day and and just left me there, like, and didn't tell the rest of my family where I was. Like, And the other family thought that you were with this said family member? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Yep. Yeah. And so, like, I guess, you know, one day they came asking, you know, hey, where's different? Where is she? They were like, oh, I dropped them off at CPS. She is CPS. So that's how, you know, that that went. But within that time frame of being in the system. Wow. um, It's okay. I turned tragedy into triumph. So, you know, you got to listen through. Let me let me finish my story. You know, you're going to be crying tears of joy when you're done. Um, So. With that being said, me finding out, you know, well, well, what I found out within those six months of being there is that, you know, if you age out of care, the state of Texas will pay for, you know, foster kids to wish a fee waiver to college. And so right then and there, you know, using my street smarts to elevate my book smarts, I decided to stay in CPS for those four years and just, you know, duke it out mm-hmm. and have a way to go to college free of charge. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I did. Yes. And I ended up going to San Houston State University. I, I did pretty well there. I started up my own uh, organization that was tailored to being motivational speaker to the youth, volunteering and, and just educating and just being involved <laughs> with the community mm-hmm. overall. And by the time I finished, I was able, I traveled abroad you know, to South Korea, traveled to eight countries within that time frame, 
ended up getting my degree, my bachelor's degree in entrepreneur, excuse me, international business. And then I have two minors in economics and business communication. And then I have my master's degree in entrepreneurship. And I'm also a Texas real estate agent. So although my story started off as, you know, trial and tribulation, and tragic, mm-hmm. you know, God brought me through it all and his plan worked out for me accordingly. And so I was blessed with so many accomplishments and achievements, even in such, you know, I had a lot of issues and demons to battle in my adulthood that, that came within my childhood trauma. And like I said, having all those accomplishments and, and coming from a upbringing, you know, where chaos was normal for me. And actually when I got placed in foster care, I was placed in actually really good homes. And for me, like I said, chaos was normal. So I got that notion that it was just too good to be true. And so I basically was squandered that and, you know, push people away, be very off-putting, became annoying, you know, just that type of person. And again, that carried over into my adulthood to where to point to where I was messing up, you know, business opportunities that would take me places. And there was just one, this one opportunity that I squandered so much to where I regret it until this day, even though I've made up for it, I still regret it. You know, it was, oh, wow. it was one of those meetings, you know, I'm, I had a meeting with the person who was just very well connected and, you know, could have taken me places, but I wasn't allowing myself to be, to feel worthy. You know, I allowed those demons in the back of my head to tell me, you know, you're not worthy of it. They're not going to like you, you're too country, you're too ghetto. And so what I did was I showed up late on purpose and it left a sour taste in their mouth. <laughs> and, and until that day, until this day, I, I regret that. And, and I just wish, you know, but it was it was that moment in time, you know, where it forced me to face the ugly truth about myself and, and, and the fact that I needed to fix my issues. And in order to do that, I needed to take my ass to therapy and, and coming up in that culture and that environment. I'm pretty sure you can relate uh, or somebody out yes, there ma'am. listening, you know, just growing up in that environment to where you were taught, you know, what goes on in this house stays, stays in this house. In this house. <laughs> And so, you know, be keeping everything bottled up and feeling like, oh, it ain't their business. They don't care. And I don't, they don't need to know what's going on. You know, that, that held me back from, you know, fixing my inner issues early on. And, you know, here I am, you know, headed towards my 30, you know, finishing out my 20s, you know, you know, talking with God and telling him, you know, I know I'm destined for greatness. I know that I'm meant for something good, big in this world. And, you know, just allow me to get it together. And so with that being said, you know, I just dismissed that notion that, you know, black people don't do therapy. And I took my ass to therapy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for two years now, consecutively, I've been going and I'm very proud of myself and, and I have no shame or guilt about it. And I'd say that to anybody out there listening. You know, if you're feeling depressed, suicidal, any of those type of emotions, Mm -hmm. then it's okay to not be okay, but just don't sit there and not be okay. Go get help. Okay. In the long run, it will save your life. It would would do you so much good. And, and I'm telling you here right now, you know, if it had not gone to therapy, I wouldn't be here today. Mm -hmm. You know, Robin Williams was one of my favorite childhood actors growing up. In my childhood, he was one of my favorite actors growing up. And when he died, I said to myself, I'm going to end up like him if I don't get my shit together. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to be one of those persons who you hear have, they're so well accomplished, look so happy on the outside. I know. But one day you're going to wake up and hear that, you know, they took themselves off the map. Yeah. So I didn't want to be that person. I know when and I so, heard that about like, him, I, like I, I was said, in just disbelief the truth. too. Say it again. I said when I heard about him and you know how it happened, I was in disbelief too because I cried for yes, days and days. He's and such days. a good actor. <laughs> like when you see him, he's smiling. He was he's so happy, smiling. But I, it scared me because I'm like, that's me. That's me. I'm Robin Williams. I'm just like him. Mm-hmm. I smile like in front of everybody. I put on this big mask like I'm happy when I'm really not, and I'm dying on the inside. By so I, I completely empathize with him in that moment in time and and his death taught me a lesson that I didn't want to be that person Mm -hmm. and so going to get my shit together and and talking with my my therapist therapist who's now my mentor and he you know encouraged me to you know get back into something that I loved in the past which was writing and journaling and so with doing that you know and channeling all that negative energy into a positive one and and being stuck in the house during the pandemic and 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 again praying and meditating and talking with god right (laughs) 
uh, this is where what if a controversial paradigm shift was born. Okay. Um, when the death of George Floyd happened, excuse me, of course, being from Houston and, and being so close to home and, and right down the street from the protests, of course, I wanted to be involved. But when the day came to do so, I couldn't because I felt, you know, in order to, I wanted my voice to be heard longer than just in that moment of time. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted my voice to be heard even when I'm gone. And so going home, praying and meditating, you know, little by little, God would, you know, give me dreams, hence messages, you know, through watching TV or talking with people. And just day by day, I would just write, just kept writing. And by the time I started this in June 2020, and by the time December 2020 came around, I was finished. It's just like I said, it's a short book, it's not long. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I contacted my lawyer. <laughs> Funny story, this is one thing about life. Once you think you know something and, and it comes through and knock you off and remind you you don't know a damn thing. Right. And so just keep mm-hmm. learning, keep living, keep growing. That's just one thing about it. But when I talked with her and she read and she got back with me, she was like, I love the book. I think you're going to do really well. But what's the name of your business? And I'm like, huh, what? Now, mind you, even though I got a, a master's degree in entrepreneurship, I had no plans on starting my business right away. It was supposed to be for real estate. Mm. Um, and so I'm like, well, it, it's my book. I kept telling her the name of my book. And she's like, no, I don't think you understand. She was like, you'll have to have, anytime you're selling a product to the public, you have to have an LLC in order for them to, you know, so they won't come after your personal assets on your business. And so between the year of December 2020 up until March 2021, um, again, talking and praying and meditating with God and asking for the spirit of discernment and then learning all of the ins and outs of running a business in Texas, um, I came up with my business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC. How did you get the business name? So, uh, like I said, just being in tune with God, talking with him. I'm really big on, you know, meditating, chakra healing, um, astral projection, just doing yoga, just really being in tune, you know, with my spiritual side and my third eye, if you will. And so whenever I'm, you know, in tune with my third eye, that's when, you know, God comes through and he blesses me with the knowledge and the wisdom that I need and go from there. And so this is where third eye entertainment was born. And basically, you know, our business is about or our creed, if you will, is a company that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services that educates, inspires, and entertains all at once. We also have a model that we live by and try to, you know, share with all of our artists or whoever comes across Third Eye Entertainment um, that, you know, in the midst of, you know, the pandemic, it showed us that life is not promised and tomorrow is never guaranteed. And so anybody out there who's listening to this and that's feeling in their heart and know in their mind they're meant for greatness, that they're meant to, you know, have that good life and leave their mark on this world, it's time, it's now or never, you know. And so, you know, reprogram your mind and get that mindset that you're trying to get rich during the pandemic or die trying. And and I always tell my friends and, and family, like, you either trying to have that come up like Cardi B or that comeback like Robert D. And mm-hmm. so for me right now, I'm working on that come up. Yeah. I'm on my come up. Mm-hmm. And so it, it, that's our that's our mission and that's our vision, you know, to bring social awareness to society um, through our products and services, as well as, you know, a part of that being we talk about issues that are you know considered you know taboo and pushed under the rug such as systemic racism injustice we not only talk about these issues we talk about mental health wellness suicide prevention um women's rights voters rights gender rights lgbtq you know you name it. anything that's considered taboo or people like to you know dismiss or deny that exists as an issue in the world we bring it to light and we encourage, you know, you know, stimulate conversations about that, because I believe it is my theory and third eye entertainment theories that when we have these conversations. Then over time, that is where systemic change comes in play, okay. and then that is where you know we can we can work from you know answering that questions. How do we fix systemic racism? Well, first off, we can talk about it by acknowledging and accepting that you know it's that happened it and that it's still happening. Mm-hmm. And then once we do that part. Let's talk about ways that we can change, how we can come together, you know? Mm-hmm. And so that that's just my theory of it, and that's my contribution and my attempt to try. Nothing beats a failure but a try. And so if, if it goes nowhere fast, at least I can't say I didn't try. Exactly. So you <laughs> but, said this, um, you started uh, the book in June ahead. 2020 to December 2020. 
So did mm-hmm. you start with some of the, the pages from your journal? Or was this like a totally different writing that you were doing with the book? I was in the journal, my little journals. Like I just started. So this um, book was, and I have so many like journals your, now. Within your journal, okay. I had a little white compositional book that I would write little affirmations in. Mm-hmm. You know, telling myself, you know, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna be all right. You know, ten years from now, I'm gonna be a millionaire. And then one day, like I said, just praying and meditating, I just started writing the words, "What if?" Writing the questions, "What if?" Okay. You know, so fears are there, and just keep writing and kept writing and kept writing and until I, you know, twenty December 2020, I was finished. Okay. And, and I was, yeah, just God's plan, man. Mm-hmm. That's all I can say. His, his divine intervention, mm-hmm. you know, the way, what I asked for and what I prayed for, you know, and how he sent it to me, it's just God's plan. And, and I'm so grateful to be the one that was anointed, if you will, to, to, with this task, because it takes somebody, you know, who is bold, brave, and blunt. And, and and not necessarily don't give a damn or don't give a fuck, but just you know, it's like I, I I'm 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 okay with getting into good trouble for you know just for a good cause, a good righteous cause, and if it's something you know that I'm speaking on that's real, you know nothing that I'm saying is a lie. Right. And so, I also want to take this time to note because the book is getting a lot of good reviews out there, but for the haters and the critics, they want to say. That this book is a tool <laughs> can be seen, can use as a tool in the black for the black community to uprise against the white folks. No, it's not. You know, stop that right here, right now. Stop that bullshit. Okay, this book again is it's gonna ring your bell. It's gonna make you mad, whether it's good or bad. You're gonna be talking about it, mm-hmm. and so. In this book again is not not to stimulate again that's why it comes with a disclaimer so if anybody exactly. tries to say that and again these illustrations uh, they don't detail <laughs> how they accurately they may not detail how they accurately occur but you will get the point yeah and so yeah uh, <laughs> I don't want to, I just get so excited and amped up when I mm-hmm. I talk about it so I got <laughs> slow down a little bit got it. but I think you know with this book and it's not only just for black and white it's for everybody I touch bases on everything in this book if you if you're able to muster up making it to the end to get my overall message you will see that this book is not just about black and white or racism if you will this is about you know compassion for all mankind mm-hmm. and so with people you know out there you know listening to this or, or they they you'll see them on Facebook. I will say this, and they're not liking what they're hearing. I would say this, read the book and then pass judgment. Mm-hmm. You know, whether, again, like I said, people are going to talk about this good or bad, but at least you know, you know, the gist of what the book is fully about after you read it, or at least you, you know, took into time to try to read it. Mm-hmm. Don't just, you know, assume that this book is just a weapon or something to, to, you know, bash the white community. No, it's not, you know, and if, if need be said, let me just say this again, you know, we can't change the past, you know, nothing about that, you know, can't do nothing for move on from that. And, you know, and for the sake of, you know, being Christ, like I can't say I'm a Christian because, you know, at times I can be a little heathen. So <laughs> I say, <laughs> I got to be real with myself. I, I ain't perfect. So, but, but I'm, I'm down with DOT. You know, I know how to fall on my knees and, 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 and I know who I, who I answer to, if you will, no matter what nobody say. But with that being said, I, I would rather, you know, as I said, like being Christ like have forgiveness in my heart no matter what. So I forgive their ancestors on the behalf of my ancestors because they would want me to. Mm-hmm. And so it, it, I'm okay with that. And, and so, yes, we accept it, we acknowledge it, then we forgive you. I forgive you for we on behalf. I don't know. I know it's a lot of black people out there who are going to be like, no, we need to have our own. But again, it's going to take all of us, not just, you know, Blacks and whites who want to, those who don't want to. That's really where the problem is, the people who don't want to come together. And it's not just with the white folks. It's, we have some of our people out there, too. Let's be real. And that's a whole I'm, a, I'm, a opti- I'm optimistic, but I'm a realist as well. And so Me this is too. what happens when you come into a different world. You know, come and learn. This is what you get, the real. Mm-hmm. And so, and that's the reason, another reason why I reached out to you, Miss T, because I, I, I liked your vibe. Like yes, like ma'am. you said, you were all in uncut. And yeah. so I need somebody, great minds think alike, you know, exactly. so... And, and and so <laughs> off track of what I forgot the green well, I do have it. a question. But, so I know you said that you give the disclaimer um, regarding the the graphics or the illustrations. How much input did you have on the actual illustrations, or did you tell someone your vision? All of them. Okay. Okay. 
No, I, I oh I didn't draw them. My no 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 no. My uh, my illustrator is Anastasia uh, Arnold. She is the illustrator of the book. Mm -hmm. However, you before just I reached what out to her, I had already scratched out like what it is that I saw in my mind. It, all these illustrations are what I envisioned. Yes, that's, so, yeah, that's what I want. This to is what you see. This is what my third eye sees Got again. It. So when you're looking at these illustrations, this is what my third eye is seeing. And so um, again, with the illustrations. They basically, they, you, you'll get the gist of it. It may not, you know, tell the exact way how the event occurred or the actual results of it, but it, it does tell the, you know, main gist of it as well as each of the sub paradigms include references. Like I said, I did my research and my homework. Mm -hmm. um, and so if anybody out there, you know, who needs to fact check, please believe yeah, that there are references somebody attached with the that. book. Yes. And at the back of the book, you have a bibliography <laughs> that you can just go use that as your reference check. And so mm -hmm. no time for games over here. Like I said, yeah. when, when I come with it, you got to come correct. Exactly. And so, Cause somebody um, definitely going to try to challenge it in whatever way they yeah. can. So the yeah. fact that they can fact check that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like I said, our, our, mm -hmm. our motto is manifest plan prepare. I was saying that with that, uh, with our motto and creed, you have to manifest what it is that you, believe and perceive in your heart and then second plan for it then third you must prepare for what it is that you're about to receive for, for me i'm going to manifest plan and for prepare whatever is about to happen with this book which is nothing but good mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so what would be your your recommended age for this book so I, I i'll tell you my target age audience is between the ages of 18 and 35 okay. however I would like even the older generation to read this as well because these, this this ties into the historical paradigm. A lot of the people who grew up in the sixties and fifties will definitely resonate with the historical paradigm. Yes, um, and political as well. And yeah, talk about a lot of the political oppression you know the black community has faced over well, especially with the civil rights movement. And so, though definitely with historical and political, I think the older audience would resonate with it, and with precedent and hypothetical the ages of 18 to 35 but i want everybody that's 18 and up it's definitely not a child's book this won't be yes. any type of high school or elementary but um anybody who, who's an adult about theirs and, and 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 has common sense to understand that this book is not written to 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 start any trouble but to to again like i said stimulate the conversation then of course this book is for them and not just again with black and white i want everybody to it tested well with higher with women and but you know, men liked it as well. And so women, African-Americans, um, people who care about social issues such as this, this injustice and extremist racism, they will do well with this. I did my test market analysis and it showed with these four components were the main components that this book would do good in. Okay. Did you have any issues uh, finding a publisher where some... Sound in or no, I, like I another. said, God's plan. When I prayed on it and after the spirit of discernment, I manifest, planned, and prepared it. God had everything lined for me. And so with the publisher that I found, mm -hmm. I actually, I wrote a little rinky-dink message on Facebook, and everybody chewed me out on it. The way I set it up, they were like, oh, you can't be a real author asking this type of question. This is a scam. And it was only one person who responded, and it was like, well, just the me. let's talk. I, I like what you're talking about. I'm, well, I'm interested in what you're saying. Let's talk. And so I ended up speaking to Shavonna Bush of Bush Publishing Legacy Publishing, and I showed her the manuscript, and she was like, oh, my God. And and so the rest is history. You know, she okay. put me on with Anastasia and, and so many others, you know, the, the lady, um, excuse me, um, Mary Tony, who did my book trailer, um, Vivian Wilson, who who does the book cover design, so big shout out to them as well. That mm -hmm. they they all came into play through my publisher, and so it was God's plan. Like I didn't have to go looking here and there; they came to me, if you will. Okay. And you said just for reference and record purposes, there is a disclaimer on the cover of this book. Yes, ma'am. Okay. It will have yeah. a little. How they how they had to make prints put the yes. put the little explicit content. Yes. Yes, it's his fault. Yes. 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 <laughs> but uh yes. it, it it will have that. And again, this book, again, let me also say this for the critics. Of what I've learned about the, what what makes me confident, not cocky about this book, again, doing my research and what I've learned. It, it, from from number forty five, I don't acknowledge him as mine. You know what I'm talking about, right? Number forty five, uh, the previous uh, one. The previous one. 
So what I <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah. So what I've learned with, from from him, you know, being in that office in that short amount of time, those four little year chaotic years, and even in towards the end of it, the end of his tea, he still had seventy five plus million people condoning his bullshit. That's twenty five percent of the U S adult population. And so what that showed to me was no matter what, who you are, what you stand for, what you believe in, how you act in public or in private, there will always be somebody out there condoning your BS no matter what. Of course. So therefore, you go where you celebrate it, not mm-hmm. where you tolerate it. Yep. And so with that being said, I'm going to go where I'm celebrated, not where I'm tolerated. Because mm-hmm. I know somewhere out there, somebody going to condone this book. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm not worried about, you know, anybody saying that this book is meant to, you know, cause harm or they, they come with a trash talk. Like I said, alligators again. I'm ready mm-hmm. for it. I mean, uh, just I like, uh, you know, you were t- just talking about the critics or whatever and, mm-hmm. you know, trying to, to touch bases on the political side very lightly. But just to comment, if our president was to act like their president, it would have been a... And, uh, I, also touch, I talk about... Yeah. How, and now, this is where you get to... I think it is political <laughs> president. Buy the book and then you can see. <laughs> but, um, it would not have uh, been as tolerated. It talks about, about Obama and, you know, 45. And so, definitely... If you want to know my political views and how I feel about, you know, my political views, mm-hmm. read the book. You know, would what not is a controversial have been paradigm shift? That's, 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 that's the damn sure. They would have <laughs> not. Absolutely they, not. They wouldn't have wanted to be as understanding as they expected us to be or to go along, to get along like we were. They wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Hell no. <laughs> So again, with this book, I have it flipped to where you know you see a white Obama and you and you see you know the crowd hurling and, and, and shouting nasty mean things to them. And if you're a white person out there who sees that illustration and it upsets you, it makes you mad. You 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 know you get pissed off. You want to you know call the Congress and have to try this book ban called Amazon or whatever. And however, on the flip side of it, when you see a when you you hear about this happening to Obama and it's okay, it's justified, it's the past, get over it, then that's how you know systemic racism is still alive. Mm -hmm. Then that's how you know racism still exists within, you know, the culture or the subculture, if you will, Mm -hmm. that we live in. So that's why, again, I'm I'm tired of hearing that BS. That's why I wrote this book, you know, to to ring some bells, to put my contribution into society, as well as, you know, again, growing up in in that uh, tough upbringing, I prayed a long time ago to allow... For God for, to allow me to be the one in my family to break the generational curse and create generational wealth. And so with this book, here's where it starts. Yeah. And, you know, a year from now, I can only imagine, you know, where I'll be, you know, only further and faster. That's all I so can say. definitely, we, I'm going to have to fast forward probably a year from now. I need to write this down. So I can bring yeah, you girl. back. I actually, I have plans just depending on how uh, COVID and everything is going next year. I'm just trying to do it between spring 2022. I would definitely love to start my book tour, um, hitting up HBCUs all up and down the East Coast mm-hmm. uh, to the south, south side. You know, um, I have a total, I think, of 35 prospective universities in 15 states. And so, you know, anybody out there listening, stay tuned for that. I have a lot more club coming. I'm more than just an author. I do motivational speaking. I'm an avid traveler. I've been to over just about 50 countries, if you will. Also, part of you know my business on, on the other side. You know, we have a travel blog and a YouTube blog that I share, you know, with the public. And so I, I'm, you know, more than just one option, if you will. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is different worlds where you come and learn. That that's that's real. Cause I mean, just to give people an idea, which. You're going to want to get the book because, like the title, it's the what if. It's the what if. Did you, did you see the book trailer, right? I, I showed you the book did, trailer. Yes. <laughs> That's what why I'm thought? trying to paint the picture for them so they can, you know, like go and get this yeah, book. Girl. So you just pretty much put the shoe on the other foot. The stuff that we mm-hmm. went through, they put us through, drug us through. What if we did that shit to them? Would they mm-hmm. still be mad and in their feelings, you know? Will we be telling them to get over it? You know, mm-hmm. what's done is done. Uh, what if it said blacks only? You know, you if you white, you can't come in here. You white, go around the back. Or mm-hmm. instead of black housemaids, 
white maids, you know, what mm -hmm. it's just the what if. And there is definitely a long line of what ifs. So yeah. Yeah, I, well, yeah. that for surely will make you think. So if my question doesn't get you, the illustration will. Mm -hmm. If the illustration don't get you, the question will. I also talk, I have a paradigm in historical that um, talks about Thomas Jefferson and then and, um, Sa Sally Hemming, if you will, just saying, you know, what if Thomas Jefferson was a black president mm -hmm. who raped and molested his 14-year-old white slave hmm. and for that it resulted into six offspring. Hmm. And so that's yeah. there as well. And you'll have the, you, I have the portrait of them showing, you know, you know, some little mixed babies and a white little 14-year-old looking white girl with a black man hovering over her. Hmm. So how would they feel when they see that photo, yeah. the illustration? Mm -hmm. And, 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 and what I would like to or hope for is, unfortunately, at the next protest that we'll have to have of, at the event of the death of an unarmed you know, black person, I would like love to, you know, see, you know, with my illustration, just, with, you know, asking for permission, because I do own and copyright these illustrations, um, to see these illustrations at these protests so that they on can see the this. Signs. On the signs? On, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All you got to do is hit me up for my permission Ooh. and you got it. Yeah, yeah. I want them to see this is this is how you you know ring the bell and stimulate. In my theory, how you stimulate you know the conversation, mm. how you get it started, whether they like it or not, we don't put it in their faces. And I'm I'm leaning on you know my people to help me out. So like I said, I'm gonna mm. go where I'm celebrated, not where I'm tolerated, and then just you know lean on them and have confidence in them that they're gonna help me spread the word. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> That, that's gonna be good. So when is your uh, when your book be available, and where can everyone find it? Yes, so the book is going to be available on pre-sale uh, starting the week of August 30th, so I guess we next got week. the next. Mm -hmm. No, next yeah, week. Yeah, next week. Next, <laughs> next week. God, Liz, yes. go by so fast. Next week. Next week is going to start. Yep. Um, also, I must say, before I go any further, in association with the book, we do sell other merchandise, um, including, you know, apparel and small items and, and such like coffee mugs and other things, but you'll just have to go to our website and see. Okay. However... Those merchandise will not be available for the pre-sale. They'll be later available later on later in September. Okay. And so just have to note that when you go to the website, differenceworld.net, you'll see that the list of items that we are going to be selling in the future. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, I'll have the list. You can go on my website again, differenceworld.net, and that's where you can order the pre-sale for the book. Uh, right now, I have it priced at $20, and after the pre-sale, it'll go up. Um also available is the book trailer. I have a sample read of the manuscript on my website, too, as well as all of our social media platforms, including our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. That's all on our Contact Us page. <clears throat> so, again, if you go to differenceworld.net, you will see that there. And just for the record, spell your name for everyone. Yeah, okay, so, so again, uh, my name is different. Yeah. It's <laughs> different. D-I-S-E-R-N-T. Okay. Mm -hmm. All righty, I got it. And what would be the price of the book after? So after the book, uh, I'm excuse me, after the pre-sale, the mm -hmm. book is going to be set at the price twenty five ninety nine plus shipping and handling. Also, um, it'll be bundle packages as well that'll be available with the book, as well as you can buy other items with the book on my website only. Um, also, the book will be available after the pre-sale on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles. But that was for right now, I'm next gonna question. Direct all, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to direct all traffic for the pre-sale and then until the time being to my my personal and direct website. Therefore, if there was any issues, you don't have to go through Amazon or anybody else. Come directly call from me. you. Yeah, I like yeah. that. So where can mm -hmm. they follow you on social media? Yeah, so the main social media site I'm on right now is Facebook. You can follow us at T third I L L C spelled T H the number three R D L L C E Y E. And again we are we are on Facebook, Instagram, we have a YouTube channel uh, Twitter again. Just go to my website, differenceworld.net. It is too many like taglines to mm -hmm. just name them out. So yeah, the only way I can remember offhand is Facebook, if you will. Got so, um, but you probably yeah, have the other website. links on the Facebook page too that they can definitely, to. definitely. Yeah. yeah, if you go yeah. to Facebook, all of our social media handles everywhere. Instagram, you can find Twitter everywhere, everywhere. 
Got it. So you can just go to Facebook, y'all, and you can get the mm-hmm. Instagram and all the other uh, platforms. So that mm-hmm. is great. Well, I definitely want to thank you for uh, coming on and talking uh, about your book. I know uh, you mentioned before that some of the other pods didn't, <laughs> they were scared. Well, I wasn't scared. So yeah, girl, I saw the like, I don't want to mess up my money. <laughs> and I understand, I get it. Like I said, it takes somebody who have tough alligator skin and is blunt, brave, and bold. And you're looking and right at her. How you talking like to her, if you will. Is, that's not true. I mean, and again, I just want to say this for those people, the critics or whatever in the hell, haters, whatever you want to call them. This book is just a shift. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a paradigm shift, just like you said. (laughs) But for those who don't know, you know, for you fact checkers, they Mm -hmm. had books geared about us. Oh, yeah. How to tame slaves and how to, you know. What's this guy? I think he's not true, but they call him Willie Lynch. That's where the lynching came from. There's a notion from Willie Lynch, who isn't even a real person. This was just a person they made up. Yeah. But they had books that pretty much taught those other people how to, you know, downgrade us and how to keep us in line and, you know, how to do all of these things to us, like a freaking training mm-hmm. manual, you know, so I don't feel bad about this Yeah, well, book my book will show them how to take, how we take back our yeah. power. <laughs> And, and let me just take the time to remind you and just to notify you that you got a crown on your head and you are wearing it very well, Queen. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I truly appreciate the opportunity. Me being up and coming You're and welcome. nobody knowing who I am right now, I appreciate you for hopping on the wagon early on. So, you mm-hmm. know, when this book blows off and my name takes off mm-hmm. and, and people start getting on, I can say you were there in the beginning. So I truly appreciate that You're opportunity. Welcome. Are, yeah, and anybody else out there listening, thank you all for, you know, tuning in and listening to me. And again, mm-hmm. with, with your mental health, you know, once you get that check, once you get your mind right and get your heart right, you can get your shit together and do anything that it is that you want in life. So manifest, plan, and prepare for that shit. It's coming to you. Difference world. Come and learn. Exactly. So again, y'all, pre-sale August the 30th. August the 30th, mark your calendars. <laughs> so you can go and check out this book again titled What If a Paradigm, no, a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Mm-hmm. See how I caught mm-hmm. that? I caught that and corrected myself. It's definitely controversial. It's exactly. Full on disclosure, controversial, know, right? right there in the tagline, so you can see it. It's exactly. controversial, people. <laughs> so if you can't take the heat, do not come get don't, your don't ass to this out kitchen. the kitchen. Don't even yes, peek ma'am. your head around the door, none of that. So, yeah. So before <laughs> I uh, close out my mic, uh, is there any other last words that you would like to say to the people out there or... Yeah, um, real quick, I just want to take this time to uh, give a shout out to my MMA coach. Uh, I actually I didn't tell you this, but I do MMA too. Uh, my MMA coach, Coach Saul Solis, rest in peace to him. We lost him last week due to COVID. And so um, I learned a lot from him, my mentor for the past six years. He was the one who also helped me. Once I got my mental health right, I was able to get my physical right and, you know, lost over 100 pounds with this man. And so um, it, it tomorrow you know i have to you know say my final goodbye to him but i just want him to know you know i'm going to always keep his name alive and his his memory and just hold it down for him you know wherever i go so rest in peace coach saw so these one thing i learned from him is that in order to be the best you gotta shit you gotta do the shit your opponent won't do and so that that's just a message i always keep with me and care with me you know everywhere so again rest in peace to the godfather of texas mma coach saw so Yep. All right, y'all. Well, until the next episode. Later. All right, everybody, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to my audio interview again with Miss T of the Chats and Vibes podcast. Uh, be sure to show her some love and check out her podcast available on Anchor. I've dropped her description, her uh, information below in my description, so definitely show her some love. And again, big shout out to her for having me. Uh, this was one of the first interviews I had done um, 
once I had, you know, published my book, What is the Controversial Paradigm Shift? And she was one of the, you know, few people that was able to give me, you know, willing to give me a chance and to come on her show. And I was very nervous <laughs> to talk with her. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I had a very good time and uh, definitely enjoyed myself. So if you guys liked our conversation and what we were talking about, you can definitely show me by liking, sharing, comment, and definitely subscribing to my YouTube channel as well as sharing this video uh, all around. I do appreciate all the love and support that I am getting. Uh, again, as well as all my other social media handles, you want to check me out, you can go to my website, differenceworld.net. I have my Twitter, my Instagram, TikTok, uh, as well as like, my, my uh, personal website. You can book me for any type of motivational speaking events or grassroots conversations you would like for me to be a part of. Uh, you just have to go to my website and book me. I'm free of charge as of now. Um, so again, just go to my website, differenceworld.net, and go ahead and book your girl. What else we have going on? Also, don't forget, you guys, lastly, definitely can't forget being in Black History Month. Uh, my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, is available on my website, again, differenceworld.net. And the book, again, is written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. So, again... Please be advised that it is intended for a mature audience. I normally say if you can't take the heat, then don't bother coming to the kitchen. But it's, that's the point of me writing the book. It's for those that feel uncomfortable, that like to sweep it under the rug. It's for them to come to the table and have these conversations. So even if it's uncomfortable for you, still come on in and, 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 and see what it is I'm talking about. And the message that I'm trying to bring is more than just, you know, pissing people off and ruffling people's feathers and, and, and ringing some bells. It's more than that. Those, again, that are mature enough and, and have enough common sense to make it through hypothetical, political, and president paradigms and make it to hi and, and, excuse, um, the hypothetical, uh, what did I say before? Hist yeah, it's supposed to, excuse me, historical, political, and president paradigm. You can make it to hypothetical paradigm shift. They will see that I'm not just talking about, you know, black and white. I'm talking about, you know, unity to all of people of the different races, you know, Muslims, Chinese, Hispanics, Native Americans. I've even, you know, intertwined the LGBTQ community in this book, you know, and so it's not just about uh, black and white. It's about all people coming together and coming to that round table and having that conversations that need to be had. And so uh, definitely, guys, I would truly appreciate it. Go to my website and get your copy now uh, as well. Uh, what else we got? Just keep it right along, guys. Um, what else was tomorrow? It is uh, Thursday, so we have our pop culture review. So normally I do movies, but I think what I want to do it uh, because I recently seen a movie I haven't watched in a long time uh, called Beloved. It starred Oprah Winfrey and Danny Glover. It's about a story of a, a young black woman escaping from slavery, and it entails with you know murder and and, and poltergeist. And so uh, that's why you guys have to hit that notification bell. So when I drop these content, you guys will come and learn. So be on the lookout for that, you guys. I'll be dropping that uh, that content tomorrow. And then we have Fridays, you know, our travel vlogs, and so I'll be dropping my trip to Aruba. Uh, so be on the lookout for that, you guys. Uh, what else we got going on? Lastly, but not least, so let's go ahead and do our mental health check. Again, for those out there going through any type of mental, you know, stress, anguish, or illness, uh, please know that it is okay to not be okay, but never, ever, ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, whatever the case may be. Be it talking with a family member, a therapist, a friend, picking up hobbies, uh, uh, bending broken bridges, cutting people off. Whatever the case may be, you know, to keep you from going off the deep end or possibly taking anybody with you, do it. If you know or if you yourself need these mental health resources, please feel free to share it. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255, or you can call or text 988, or you can text 741741. For those that would prefer to go online, you can visit mentalhealthishealth.us or 988lifeline.org. Or for those that are outside of the U.S. and are watching my channel, definitely you can go to endcounseling.com. Again, that's spelled E-N-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G.com. And remember, you guys, although I am providing you with these resources, it is on you to do your own homework and find what works best for you because you are the captain of your own ship and you decide to where to navigate the water, okay? Lastly, don't forget, you know, you are not alone and whatever you are going through, this too shall pass, okay? So always remember that, you guys. And I am with you in spirit. Okay? 
uh, moving on and closing out of this vlog again, you guys. I hope you enjoyed listening to my interview with Miss T. And definitely, again, show her some love by checking out her her podcast on Anchor. And definitely show me some love by subscribing to my YouTube channel. And show yourself some love by remembering whatever it is in life that you are feeling good destined for. You have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And then it will surely come to you guys. Dip as well. Come and learn. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift? It's a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America. Through graphic but provocative illustration, What If provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. What If, a controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.